Hi everyone, this is Erin from Sandpaper Road and today I'm sharing with you how to create an altered lamp project for your home. I'm using um, a regular piece of paper and a lamp that I had in a house and I'm jump, gonna jump right in and get started right away. Um, this lamp my friend gave me actually and it just needed a little pick me up. So I'm just using a microfiber dust cloth to give it just a quick wipe off here, including the lamp shade because it was just a little dusty. And I have a lot of other lamp shades that I could have used, but this one I thought would be good for just a simple project because of the straight edges of the lamp shade. So if this is the first time you're doing this, do try to pick something that has straight edges just to get yourself used to this kind of project. So um, yeah, you'll have to excuse my little makeshift area. This is the this is my art area right here, and that's all there is to it. <laughs> so I know it might look a little bit bigger, or you might perceive it to be bigger, but it's not. So so I just use a pencil and trace the lampshade um, one side out on a regular piece of 12 by 12 paper, and it really doesn't matter what kind or color you use. This was just something I grabbed out of my stash. And I just cut it out with scissors. I'm not trying to be real perfect right now because I'm gonna have to fix it up anyway, I will imagine. But this way, what I can do is trim the edges and just kind of, I don't wanna say eyeball it, but that's essentially what we're gonna have to do. I have to decide here, am I gonna leave that little lip? Am I gonna leave a little seam? in between each side? Am I gonna go clear to the edge? But those are just decisions I can make, just whatever I feel like. So now I'll get back in, I'll zoom a little bit closer so you can see I've got four sheets of paper and I'm using the Vintage Treasure Paper Collection by Craft O'Clock. And I really just cut them out. I literally just trace and cut. I'm using a Liquitex gel medium, although I did um, start to use my 3D matte gel from Prima, but it was a little bit dried up and I knew I was going to have to add some water to it to let it kind of, you know, goop back up and didn't want to have, didn't want to wait. So I grabbed another jar of something different. This is all you do. You just stick it on, um, now I have a little plastic, um, I guess a little thing to burnish it down with. So I'm gonna do this in two ways. First, I'm actually just holding my hand inside the lampshade and pressing against my hand. And um, just to get around the sides and the edges. And I'm doing that as best as I can first. Then I turn it flat and push again to get all the extra air bubbles out. So I do that for all four sides and I save these extra pieces. Now what I'm actually gonna use the extra pieces for is I'm going to um, take something, uh, I'm gonna try to roll this, like log roll it the paper is really thick and sturdy, which is good. I wanted it to be that way. Um, I'm gonna use a little, like a floral dowel. You can use anything that, you could use a pencil, you can use a pen, you can use a stylus, anything you have, um, just to kind of get it going. This little floral dowel just came in a plant that I received, so um, I just pulled it out of the top and thought, Put it in my craft area. So probably the hardest part of this is just to get it started. I do spritz it with a little bit of water um, just to soften up the paper. When I say little bit of water, I'm, I do mean it. I mean a very, very little bit of water just to get the paper to move a little bit. And you can see I'm really pushing hard um, and rolling and rolling. Now, 
I should have gotten myself a piece of tape beforehand, but oh no, I didn't. So now I have to clamp this down or I'd have to roll it all over again. So I'm just gonna use a piece of score tape actually to uh, seal the edge here. Now I'm gonna be attaching it to the lampshade with a with that gel medium, but um, the score tape will hold the paper to itself just fine. Yep, that's all there is to it. So what I did was ahead of time and off camera, I did my rolls already. And let me show you how those will go. I've got all four sides here of my lampshade. It looks a little wonky right now, actually. It just looks like I put paper on the lampshade, but I think these rolled papers will really seal the deal. It really make it look more professional and creative. So I'm just going to um, hold them up and maybe mark with a pencil, cut it off with scissors, use my Liquitex gel medium. This is a matte heavy gel actually. And I put a big, big gob of it on there. Now you'll see me using these clips throughout the video. They're metal, like they almost look like hardware clips and that's exactly what they are. My husband found them in his stuff and said, here, do you need these in your art area? That's how I got them. So I'm sorry to say, I don't know where to tell you where to get them, uh, but I'm sure that any place where you buy hardware, you could find something like that just a clamp. They're the little clamps. Now it looks like there's a bunch of glue or this gel medium just gobbed on there. That's okay. I can get it off once I get this clamped down. Um, the clamps allow it to sit overnight, which is really nice. And I would not dare to ever use a score tape or something like that on fabric with paper because it it just wouldn't even think about holding. So now here is a sheet, uh, another sheet of paper from the collection. And I'm just, I don't have measurements. I didn't want to do measurements for this video because I figured that if you are attempting this for yourself with a lamp in your house, the measurements of my lamp would make no difference. So. Now I am using this uh, uh, straight edge here to kind of give me a guide because I marked off the paper with my pencil just where where to cut, but I did make a straight line with a straight edge. The only reason I'm cutting this with scissors, even though the paper trimmer is sitting right there, is because I am leaving the bottom strip on now, normally I trim that bottom strip of paper off, which makes it an even 12 by 12, but this time I left it on, so it was a little bit too long for my paper trimmer. Now that looks really good. I like it a lot. And to um, camouflage the fact that my edges aren't, they're not perfectly straight because I cut them with scissors, so to camouflage that, um, I thought I'd just take my scissors and sort of grunge up the edges of the paper. Then you don't notice that the, the line is a little bit wonky, crooked. I tried to use that sanding block, but that was not a good idea. That looks really good. And see how it'll go? It didn't go clear up to the top of the lamp. It left a little white space, but I don't mind that because I'll just put another strip of paper around the top and it'll be just fine. So I'll cut matching pieces of this paper, like from the same sheet of paper. I'll cut four, um, just making full use of the, the design. Now, did you see what I about did? I had it turned the other way to make better use of the paper, but if I would have done that, it would have made the design go the other way. So I opted to sacrifice paper and keep the design unified. 
Now here's where my sanding block is going to come in handy. I just lightly sand the edges of uh, the edges, the surface of this lamp, and that will help it stick better. Now I'm finding just a scrap of something, just a scrap cardboard or something to um, use to apply my glue. The surface of my desk is actually, it's like a nice craft surface and it wipes clean, but I didn't want to take the time to clean it after each time I used glue with this project. I just wanted to keep moving. So I brought out a scrap of cardboard and then I can throw that out when I'm, if it gets gunky. And like I said, I'm not that worried about whether there's, you know, um, white space on the top or the bottom. Now you might be wondering, could I use Mod Podge or Mod Podge, Mod Podge instead of um, Gel Medium and Decoupage? And I'm gonna say, if that's what you have, give it a try. But here's what I will say about Mod Podge. Um, Mod Podge has a much higher water content than a Gel Medium, so. I, I believe Mod Podge is meant more for like a decoupage where you can use it as a glue and then as a sealant, like on top. You can certainly do that here. For me, because this paper is so heavy, I prefer to use the gel medium. Um, but again, definitely you can give it a try. The worst thing that's gonna happen, honestly, because people ask all the time, can I try this with it? Can I try this with that? Honestly, the worst thing that's going to happen is that it won't work. So you might as well just give it a try. And if it doesn't work, then you can try something else, like a different adhesive or something. And then what happens is you learn, you learn more about your adhesives and the supplies that you have. You know, I only learned about mod podge like that because how many times I messed up like in my mind they didn't mess up the project they just you know they would fall apart or they it didn't hold the way I wanted it to um, because I was trying to use it in a way that it just wasn't meant to be used so give it a try you never know it might work for you if you plan to do a lot of like mixed media type projects um I would definitely recommend investing in some gel medium. There's, re there's really good ones out there. Okay, and that is that. That looks really good. I, I like it a lot. Now I'm going to go in with my craft knife and just kind of trim off the sides. Now remember that I sort of distressed the edges with my scissors. So now it's very forgiving because if I go to clean up the edges or sand the edges, it just blends in with the rest of the project, which is a little bit more, um, you know, grungy looking. Distressed is maybe the, the better word. Again, really glad I used a lamp with straight edges for my first project that's like this. Maybe as I gain more experience doing it, you know, I can do more round prod, round lamps and different size things, but we'll just keep it simple. Now I have several embellishments that coordinate with the collection. I've got my, well, I've got my glue gun and my heat gun. This is a little frame that came from the six by six collection. And I am uh, um, going to mount it on some chipboard die cuts that coordinate with the collection. 
Um, there were some flowers from the extras to cut that I fussy cut out. You can see the butterflies, the flowers. I've got all kinds of stuff. You should have seen my area. It was a huge mess, but that's okay. That little frame uh, is on the back of the packaging there, that little square frame. This little chipboard word I'm going to cover in some Versamark ink and some black embossing powder. And I'm going to put this whole thing, that's a piece of chipboard also, um, like a decorative chipboard from Craft O'Clock. That's kind of how I want it to look right there. And like with a butterfly or something right there. But I, that looks really good, but I really need to do something about that word home because uh, it just, it's just going to disappear right into the design. So I thought, well, I will just emboss the word and then that'll give it a little bit of dimension and also make it help it stand out against the rest of the composition. So this is just regular Versamark ink that I had, uh, that I used for stamping. You can use the liquid, oh, oh, you could use just the liquid and a, like a paintbrush if you wanted. I'm just going to re-ink my ink pad right before I start. Push the word into the ink pad and use my tweezers to just kind of goop it all up. And then I put it in my little, it's like a little glitter tray and sprinkle this uh, black embossing powder. That is, um, it's called, it's Raven. And it's, I think by, yes, it's by Brutus Monroe. Then I use my heat gun um, to just em heat, heat the embossing powder right over top. And I wonder if I got, on film how it just sort of lifts up. I can't imagine I would hold it the whole time because it was about burning my fingers. But you can see when it starts to get shiny and transform, it didn't take long at all. And look at that, how nice that looks. Doesn't that look good? See, now I can just use basic glue. I don't have to, I mean... I don't need to have fancy, fancy glue. I could just use regular glue. This is um, called Opal Magic Acrylic Paint, and I really like it a lot, so much. Um, I just wanted to liven up the chipboard a little bit. I like this paint because it, and it's by Prima but it's got like a real pearlescent type finish and it's cool because I, it this opal magic it's got a two color quality about it like if i would use it on something dark it would come out one color and if i used it on something light it would come out on an, like another color it's really cool these are some what are those micro beads from I, th I think they're from Stampin' Up. And what is that? Oh, there's my, um, yeah, my 3D matte gel. This must, be, I must be doing this like the next day because all I did was I sprayed it with water. Remember I told you it was a little dried up and it's good to go again, so. And so here's what I have on my table. I have a mixture of this 3D matte gel and these some of these microbeads from Stampin' Up and I just made like a little paste and I'm putting it onto this little decorative, decorative chipboard. Now, if you're interested in all these supplies, um, I do have a link that goes over to my blog. And I have a complete supply list over there and uh, links to where you can pick up some of these products. Although I don't have a link to the chipboard that looks like a doily there and the word home those are were only available in Poland I'm on the craft o'clock creative team at the time of this filming so they send me this stuff this was actually part of a I'm on their home decor creative team and this was the project I did for their um, 
creative team. It's over on their channel, the Craft O'Clock channel. So here's how the piece looks, that little um, decorative piece looks at the end there. And I, you see I left it flat in the back. So I'm simply going to use some more of the gel medium just to put right on the back. Just a nice thin layer and glue it right down. Now I'm not going to clamp that, but I am going to lay it flat in such a way that it can dry. This, these are two of the butterflies from the extras to cut. And what I did is I actually glued two of them um, back to back. That way I can perk up their wings. And if you see, because the, on these extras that has a white, like it's only one sided, so it's white on the other side. Well, by gluing them back to back, then I can uh, perk up the wings a little bit. And if you see the butterfly from the other side of the lamp, you still see a wing and not just a white sheet of paper. Just giving the wings a quick um, distress there. I'll add just a little bit of ink to the edges. I don't even know what kind. Whatever black ink was on my ink dauber. Just a little pop of gel medium right there. And that is perfect. little bit more of the paint. Added, I added a little bit of water and I thought it was going to go on a little bit better if I could just sort of spatter it instead of um, trying to brush it. Yeah, and that's basically it. I mean, just a few finishing touches after that. Um, definitely head over to the blog so you can see um, not only the like close-up photos, but you can also see a, a few more of the process photos. And like I said, complete supply list with links to purchase if you're interested. Um, here's a look at the finished lamp. Doesn't it look good? So thanks so much for watching and uh, definitely hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it so much that you're a channel subscriber and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.